the code is going to be uh, worked on in the year 2015-16. So hopefully in 2016 we should have a, a robust bankruptcy code. So broadly, I think these have been the changes on the regulatory and the tax side, and maybe we can open the uh, floor for this uh, for any yeah, questions. Yeah, we have around 15, 20 minutes for. Yeah, we have 15 minutes for yeah. questions. Questions. Yeah. O operator, uh, if we can open it for questions. Yeah. Uh, sure, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who wish to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ranbir S. from ICICI Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Um, it was uh, quite an informative uh, discussion today. Uh, just wanted to clarify one thing. Uh, this pass-through status that has been given to AIF 1 and 2 with uh, obviously uh, with these uh, withholding tax of 10% and the other issues that you've been discussing, uh, is it is it by default or do we still have those provisions? So this determinancy and all that conditions, we can get rid of that or is it, uh, do we still get into all that uh, thing of uh, knowing your investor at the time of uh, registering your trust deed and all. So I just wanted to get a little bit of clarify, a clarification on that. So I think those safeguards uh, we should still build in uh, because as we know this is budget for one year. Uh, yeah. Next year we don't know what will happen. And uh, this has been the trend as far as taxation of domestic funds has been concerned. Uh, you know, right from 2000 to 2014, the tax treatment of domestic funds uh, have uh, has been changed at least three to four times. And as we know, the life of the fund will be at least eight to ten years. So it's important that you know protection from uh, all sections under the Income Tax Act is built into the documents, whether a pass-through status is available today or not. So that at least you know, if after two years or three years down the line, uh, you know the provisions change, then you are not impacted. So my suggestion would be that you know those safeguards on uh, determinate trust and specific trust, all these safeguards should still be built in. The documents. Okay, thanks, Master. So basically, this is a, doesn't appear to be a notwithstanding provision, and therefore it leaves some room open to avail uh, benefits under the normal income tax law, whether under 61 to 64, uh, 63, and then 161 to 164. Uh, so, you know. Uh, it doesn't possibly say that um, notwithstanding anything contained, this is the situation. So I think uh, that leaves some room open, uh, definitely. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Indira Bahadur from Alpha General. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, we know that the corporate rate uh, of tax is going to come down in the next few years. But do we have any sense as to where GST, which bracket it will be in, because that will impact, um, you know, profits and planning. Uh, that's one bit of my question. And the second bit is, do we know where MAT will go in the next three or four years? Because, you know, long-term capital gains on shares is um, taxable under MAT, although that, in a sense, is retrospective as well, because it shouldn't have been. So, I mean, do we have any sense of this in the future, in, for the next three or four years? Yeah, no, so GST is still uh, evolving in that sense. And uh, again, as a precursor to GST, that they're going to be increasing the service tax to around 14%. And so that is the level at which uh, we, uh, we are expecting uh, GST as well. And uh, on, on MAT, um, uh, MAT is un unlikely to, at, at least in our, uh, uh, the way we look at it, uh, there is uh, lim uh, no talk on uh, reducing MAT. They are trying to provide some uh, uh, some exceptions in certain cases, like they are provided to FPIs. We ho hopefully they can extend the exception to uh, all the foreign investors. Uh, but in terms of uh, the rate, it's still within around uh, 20 percent. 
there's no signs that the mat rate as such or the uh, will be will be reduced i think philosophically if we look at the reason why mat was introduced was because a lot of these large companies who are making uh, huge profits were not paying tax because of the various exemptions that were available under the income tax act given the fact that the uh, fms uh, uh, indicated that 30% will be reduced to 25% over a period of 4 years and a lot of these exemptions will be taken away because somewhere is to also do the balancing act for the revenues uh, the concept of mat philosophically would become redundant because with 25% normal tax and 20% mat if there are anyways no exemption then in most situations people will end up corporates will end up paying 25% tax so there may not be yeah. actually any need for mat uh, once uh, you know these exemptions are taken away but clearly i don't think the fm will be able to take away all the exemptions uh, because at the same time uh, you know the prime minister in his uh, recent speech had mentioned that he needs to develop north east and some of the areas which cannot develop unless there are exemptions given to industrial units uh, located in those areas so maybe mat might remain to that extent but philosophically if exemptions are not there then mat should not be there yeah yeah okay thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of ashokan s sorry ashokan a from india bulls please go ahead hello yeah hi yeah go ahead hello yeah please go ahead मॉर्निंग capital gains business income and income from other sources so for capital gains and income from other sources there will be a pass through which will be available to the fund and only the investors will be taxed subject to 10% withholding now interest income will be considered as part of income from other sources so the fund will not pay tax and there will be a 10% withholding when the fund pays this interest income to the investors and there is a specific provision which has been incorporated that the portfolio company when it makes this interest payment to the fund will not make any uh, deductions in the form of uh, tds or withholding tax okay thank you thank you the next question is from the line of jinesh ranawat from edelweiss please go ahead jinesh jinesh ranawat your line has been unmuted you may go ahead with your question hello Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Ah, uh, thank you for the discussion on the budget uh, finance bill. My question is that our uh, Cat Three AIF says that it can invest in securities of listed, unlisted investing companies or derivatives, complex and structured products. So you may very well have a Cat Three AIF which is just doing listed securities and may want to have long-term capital gains. Now, ah, uh, the finance bill says that ah. Uh, pass through status has been provided for capital gains for AIF 1 and 2 so does this impliedly mean that cat 3 AIF in spite of having capital gains would have uh, would the income would be treated as business income uh it doesn't impliedly mean i think uh, that all the test for capital gains versus business income will have to be satisfied based on the facts and circumstances of the case uh so clearly it does not impliedly mean but uh, i think the risk of the investments being treated as business income is much higher in a hedge fund or a cat 3 uh, type of situation as compared to cat 1 and cat 2 but in spite of uh, it doing only listed securities and not uh, derivatives or structured products yeah because see again so that's what i mentioned it doesn't matter whether it's listed security or derivatives a lot will depend on with what is the frequency of uh, purchase and sale of listed security because that itself will be a or uh, one of the key determinants of whether it's business income or capital gain so i don't think the instrument is going to make any difference it will be uh, you know uh, i think cbdt had issued some uh, circular on uh, guidance for the tax authorities on yeah on whether a particular that income that was more in the context of foreign investors so you know but but the same yeah. uh, concept still apply on whether so, i think there are 17 18 uh, uh, 
criteria which were given for whether a particular income will be business income or capital gain. So I think the same will continue for the purpose of CAD 3 also. Correct. And assuming that it is treated as capital gain, then still we'll have to rely on the AIG ruling for uh, doing the pass through. So, your, uh, Janesh, that's correct. Today, whatever protections or provisions you have under domestic law will continue to apply to you. And the fact that this specific legislative uh, provision has been introduced for CAT 1 and CAT 2 doesn't mean that CAT 3 doesn't have domestic law pass through provisions still available. So AIG and all of your other rulings would continue to be relevant if you have capital gains income. And just to add to what, what Nishchal said, you are correct that in a derivative context, uh, there is you know greater uh, case law to say that it should be business income and treated under the business income category. But even for your uh, listed secured listed shares, you would still look at uh, the various tests, including frequency of trading, whether you're borrowing to you know make these investments, what kind of management uh, you have in place for these investments. All of those factors would be looked at as per the CBDT circular. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone who wish to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Aditya Bandari from Incofin. Please go ahead. Yeah, so I have seen some representation made to include social uh, foreign investors who are interested in the social sector on a pure debt fund. So was there any update from uh, the budget on possibilities to have AIS, which are uh, pure debt funds, and fully backed by foreign investors? So uh, as I mentioned, uh, the FM made this statement that foreign investment in AIF would be possible. We need to see the fine print on uh, uh, you know, how are there any uh, conditions with they are applying for foreign investment in AIF or is it a blanket uh, investment permission under automatic route for foreign investment in debt fund. Although FIBB has started giving approvals for uh, foreign investment in debt funds, uh, just a couple of months back there was an approval which was given. So as a, as a policy, they are not averse to giving approvals uh, for foreign investment in debt funds. But uh, whether it will be available available under automatic route or not is something which uh, we'll have to see in the fine print. Uh, because the biggest concern when it comes to debt fund is, is it an indirect way of uh, giving external commercial borrowing or a listed NCD to the Indian uh, portfolio companies through the AIF. Uh, so we'll have to see the fine print, but I think one big change which has been made uh, as far as debt funds is concerned uh, on the tax side is that the withholding tax of 5% uh, which was expiring in June 2015 has been extended to June 2017 uh, which was also causing a lot of concern for a lot of FPIs who had made investment in the debt products of Indian corporates. Uh, so this is a welcome change uh, as far as the bond market or the corporate bond market in India is concerned. And Ankit, I think you mentioned social venture funds. Was that uh, your question? Was it on yes, yeah. or social venture? Okay, so you're, you're correct that there were some representations made on that as well. Nothing has come out either in the budget speech or, I mean, there's no indication as of now that uh, they'll be introducing any changes for social venture funds, uh, which, you know, which also included... Uh, uh, adding a for-profit category along with the current non-for-profit uh, category which would have enabled these funds to also use debt more flexibly. So I think we'll see, still need to wait for some update on that. Alright, thank you all for the update. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the floor over to Mr. Nishit Desai for closing comments. Yes, thank you so much for uh, being with us this morning. And uh, as you can see, while it's a dream budget, but dream never becomes reality unless you go into the fine print as far as the budget is concerned. And we'll have to take care of those kind of things that we have discussed today. But on the whole, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's very exciting and hopefully we'll have much better times ahead. So uh, with these words, I will uh, close this. Uh, and most welcome, please feel free to write uh, us email or otherwise. If you have any further questions, um, and have a very nice day today. Uh, thank you so much.